So with that being said, going moving forward, um, I'm now in a place, okay, I'm surrendering. I'm, I'm, I'm now trying to, I'm learning to embrace the new. And now this new is requiring, requiring me to study. So studying is free, let me tell you. You want to go know something, you want to go learn something, go study. So I'm thinking now about um, getting mentored. I got mentored and they are still my mentors to this day. And actually my uh, pastors as well. And I love them, love them so much. And I was being mentored and coached by them for six months. What I thought was going to start off as three, it ended up being six months. And that was very, very challenging and very, very hard for me because I've never really had someone put a mirror in my face and tell me, you know, tell me about myself. And they were not disrespectful at all, but they were pretty much talking about the certain things that, you know, that I, that I have that are, that are inside of me that I never, ever, that I never, you know, spoke on. And they were not, they were not negative things at all. Um, they were actually beautiful and they were gifts that I didn't even know that I carried. And I just remember on one of our coaching calls, just crying my eyes out because I could not believe that God trusted me so much with such gifts. And I could not believe that he chose me for it. And, you know, and this is why I'm very big on, you know, checking on your strong friends, your, your ambitious friends, your, your, your go-getter friends, because even they too don't believe that they can do it. Even they to, um, they don't feel like they're enough for something. And, you know, they, there's sometimes there's a front that's put up that they, you know, oh yeah, I'm, I can do this. I can do that. Like, no, a lot of times there's that insecurity that they can never be good enough, you know? So being mentored by the best, some of the best communicators I've ever came across in my life, um, was totally worth the investment. And, you know, getting coached is, I want to let people know that it's not an expense, it's an investment. It is an investment, especially if you're in a new space that you have no idea what it's about. You have no idea what is to come with it. You're you're just, you're clueless. It's important that you go get leaders. You cannot spiritually feed yourself. Um, you, You can to a certain extent. You can to a certain extent. But honestly, you have to be led as well, you know, and, you know, people still ask me, you know, how did you find them? How did you do this? It was just, I was talking to another sister in Christ that was, that knows me very well. And um, she connected me to them. And from the first consultation, the rest was history. And so I spent with them six months, never missed a session. I remember being in Punta Cana last August and still making sure that I call in and um, sitting in my session for an hour, two hours. I didn't care about what was going on. I invested the time. I really wanted to learn about this new space that I'm getting in and really understand who I was as a person. You know, I think a lot of times when we're starting something new, we forget that we are looking, we, um, we are looking for answers and we're looking to understand the know-how. Understanding the know-how requires you to do the work. Understanding the know-how requires you to get up and say, okay, um, I need to go, I need to find a teacher. I need to go find an instructor. You know, we, we need to be able to tell ourselves that we need to go and learn and we need to be taught, you know, swallow your pride, swallow your pride. You may know a lot in a certain area, but you think you do, but you don't, you know? And because all I knew in this new space is that I knew how to communicate. All I knew is that I, I, I know how to bring people together, host, and talk. That's all I knew I know how to do. But I didn't know anything else that comes with it. So studying is free. Um, studying is truly free. So now at this point, I'm in the lab. I'm studying. And funny enough, besides my coaches or, and mentors, 
I, I was definitely, I would say, inspired and moved by sports analysts. So this time last year, I was watching a lot of pods. I was watching a lot of sports analysts, um, like a lot of them. And people that I would have never guessed that I'll be watching. You know, of course, you know, everybody is familiar with Stephen A. Smith. Um, I was watching, I, I mean, I was watching Club Shay Shay when he first interviewed his brother, when his brother was his first person that he interviewed. And I mean, I was watching Undisputed. I was watching First Take. I was watching a couple of uh, shows on ESPN. For whatever reason, sports was, and I'm not a sports person. I, I never grew up in sports. I was an academic kid, you know. Um, I would say my brother is the more educated person, in, the most educated, I would say, in the household about sports. He, he cares about all those things. I cared nothing about stats and any of those things, not at all. Um, I was watching The Pivot a lot. I, um, I was even watching a little bit of I Am Athlete. I was watching so many different shows. I was watching a couple of the uh, female analysts as well. Like, um, um, I would say, like, Shanae. And um, I can't think of everybody at the top of my head. But I was watching a couple of these women. And I'm seeing how they... I'm I'm paying attention to some of these analysts, their body language, the way they're talking to one another, their their eye contact, how they're responding, and much more. Their the way they're pronouncing certain words, if they're giving other people the if they're giving other people the floor to speak, if they're talking over them, you know, just different things. So I wasn't paying attention to sports in general, you know. But it was the communication part that I was paying attention to. And I was watching a lot of The Basement with Tim Ross and just different types of pods, like I said. And I can't think of everything at the top of my head, but I was just watching a lot of people that communicate. And the way that they would communicate was very intriguing. I think all of them, um, including uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, all of them have a unique way of communicating to their audience. So what I realized with all of them is that they all know who their audience was. I didn't know who my audience was yet. So it's not that me studying these analysts or these uh, big name communicators or you know these public speakers, it's not, it's not me watching them because I want to be like them, but I'm just trying to observe, observe how they, how the audience also, you know, connects and engages with them and what makes people keep coming back to them. So now I'm in a place where I'm trying to find my own audience. I'm also trying to understand what exactly is my niche? What is my scope? And I love my mentors for this because I sat down with them and and they were like, you know, what are you? Okay. You know, when I brought to them the idea of fellowship, Fellowship, first of all, was an idea back in like, I want to say 2018, 2019. And so sitting down with them and talking to them about fellowship, I was like, you know, um, one of my biggest things, and and, and this is before fellowship, is that with friends, family, and even strangers, I'm always, I always try to, I always tell myself, what was the impact that you left them when you left the room? What, What did you leave them? And that was something that was big for me. And also, one of the things that I want, that I I have a desire for people to do is to always live their best life. Not only just live their best life, but to understand that communication is very essential. It's essential and it's a priority. And so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm now, I'm writing all these things down. I'm doing a lot of writing. But now I'm like asking myself, okay, you have all these ideas, you're saying all these things, but now how do we now summarize this as a whole? And so now that's when I realized what my scope was. My, my scope was personal growth development. And what better way than to develop than through a conversation and to communicate, you know? And 
I find for me, in my experience, that the best way for me to be my best self is to communicate my feelings, to be empathetic, but most importantly, to be a good listener. And I think that's the greatest form of communication. So whenever you guys see people, these past episodes that have been in season one, I try my very best to give people the floor because what I want people to understand is that you should never feel guilty based on your experience. Never feel guilty for your experience. And I want to let you know that not only is this a safe space, but this is a place where not only you're growing, but so am I. As you're learning, I'm learning, you know, and I want us to kind of all just, you know, bounce off of each other. And you know, what was most intriguing, why the scope makes sense is because what was intriguing about season one is that all of my guests that were in groups did not know each other. People did not know each other. And the fact that they can hold a conversation as long as they did, even though they didn't know each other, was exactly why I was like, okay, God, I heard you. I heard you loud and clear. Because I think one of my fears was, will people be able to talk? 